the, the strategic journey for the development of teaching and learning began in, I suppose, 2009. We kind of looked at the quality system and looked at the way quality was functioning at the college and we tried to make quality uh, not something that's necessarily done to people, but something that they can take part in. When I came into the role as a teaching and learning development manager, I found that what I needed was a way to chart through all the things that teachers are asked to do and get to what's going to make a real difference to the impact on learning um, for learners at Yale College. And so um, the first thing I did was to really consider the overarching policies of observations and teaching and learning development at the college and to look at where the key leverage of change would be for teaching and learning. What that sparked was a kind of continuous college debate and it changed the culture from entering evaluations or description into a database about where people were at to these professional learning communities discussing and talking about what they need to do to improve. And it's this, this move away from the focus on teaching to the focus more on what the teaching does to impact the learning. That we really needed to create a new approach to teaching and learning which would be looking at skills development of learners, to be looking at assessment for learning. The difficulty is the consistency. That's, that, that's the bit that, because you may, you may have um, excellence there and adequate kind of over here uh, and the difficulty is in getting that getting to begin with getting everything consistently good uh, I think that, that that's the challenge in, in the first instance and then moving the good to consistently excellent I realized that it was the middle managers who are absolutely key to what's happening within the classroom and if we wanted to have cultural change in terms of making an impact on teaching and learning, we had to get the middle managers really developing their teams so that they understood the pedagogy of excellence and they understood the latest developments in teaching and learning. Many of them are very experienced, but they've been out of teacher training for a long time. And so looking at really developing their expertise so that on the ground with those teams, they could be the key levers of change. We've worked on nurturing that middle management level to create um, the, the necessary innovations that were going to execute change at, at a departmental and team and ultimately at the learner level. Alongside that discussion we really streamlined the data as well that teams were getting and we made sure that it was clear, concise uh, and um, that actually not the data looked good but the presentation of the data looked quite good as well. On the ground, in addition to the work that we had to do at the middle management level, we had to give teachers a very clear framework of ways in which they could develop and improve their teaching and learning. Part of that was to give them some help in terms of their creativity and innovation. So in order to support them in terms, but not limit them in terms of their teaching and learning, we gave them a clear framework for what a unit of learning should look like and we gave them clear areas which they could develop. So there was a hook, there was a peer learning or an active learning time, there was a stretch and challenge frame, and finally there was a reviewing learning at the end of that unit of learning. And we had to kind of take away the concept of a lesson within that context. And once we got teachers talking about the phases of, of learning, we also were able to provide them with a range of activities to underpin that. So teachers have got those online as a resource bank so they can just dip in and find a jigsaw activity or a peer learning activity. The idea of teaching takeaways and the resource bank isn't about giving a lesson to somebody because it's not a lesson, it's a recipe card for an activity. So this means that just as if you have no ideas you know, for what to make for tea, it's about giving somebody just a little bit of inspiration about something that they could try. We want teachers to be innovative and creative and to try something new. We want to take the time in preparing teaching, not to be about you know, the paperwork or the audit, but to be about the creativity and the innovation. In terms of the time scale of the whole process of change, I think that it's fair to say that it was a three-year process. 
In the first year, we looked at looking at the mechanics of change. So we looked at the observation process, we looked at the training of the middle managers, we looked at how that was then going to be translated at team level. Developing the lesson observation process was, was another one that was significant because the lesson observation process, um, it was, it was up re for review, the, you know, it kind of served it, 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 its time as it were. But the, the policies and procedures needed updating. They needed to um, recognise the fact that perhaps our lesson observation process wasn't as strong as we thought it was when we went into the 2009 inspection. Learn is also part of an embedded process where they are feeding back on every class that they have. Um, and that goes into team management meetings and the learners have a say in how their course should be developed and improved. So we're putting learners right at the heart of the curriculum developments for teaching and learning as well. From the perspective of the students and the, and the learners, there's, there's, there's definite evidence that it has moved things forward in terms of their enjoyment. That, that comes through in learner feedback surveys where they mention that the, the breadth of the, the methods used in lessons has developed significantly in the last two years. There's also real evidence of success in terms of results. Learners are very happy with the delivery of courses, with the support that they receive and also with the interactivity of teaching and learning as well. Within um, our learner surveys, the feedback on teaching and learning is consistently high. So that triangulates with what we're finding on the ground within observed sessions. The, st the staff have um, really enjoyed it. They, they've taken a very professional view about it. Every one of the staff have been engaged in it. And they think it's had a, a positive impact for them because it's had a positive impact for the students. They, they find it easy to plan lessons now because they can look up a good idea. If they want to do some study skills work, they look at the teaching takeaways package and there's so much on there that they can use. Some of it may be applicable to their subject or their personality, some of it won't, but there will be plenty there that they can pick and choose. Particularly last academic year, um, so 2012-13, it was almost like Estim were inspecting us every, every other month um, as part of uh, other provision or, and each time Estim came in I could see the development I could see, right, so it's working, it's beginning, it took time, I'd say it took a good few years to start to see the, the fruits of our labour. The work that we undertook with our FE staff in 2009 was really important for us because that paved the way for, if you like, the blueprint of, of what we wanted to do. We then refined that within our adult community learning um, provision because we needed to make improvements in that area. and. Taking all the learning from those two processes, when it came to work-based learning, we took all our best practice and what we knew worked into the improvement of consortia. And then in inspections, we were starting to see that Estin was seeing what we thought we were seeing as well. So we became more confident with our self-assessment, uh, and, and we became more confident that we were heading on the right on the, on the right path with our teaching and learning development. We took our observation process and the best practice of that, we worked with colleagues to make it fit for purpose for work-based learning, but most importantly we enacted a cultural change within the assessors and what we call trainer mentors on the ground to impact a change that would mean that they're not just assessing learning but they're actually coaching and mentoring learning and it's about the feedback loops and about the smart target setting that we'd all learned about in 2009 being put into practice on the ground with learners. We were actually quite excited about Estin coming in uh, and really up for it and you know this is an opportunity here for us to uh, validate our self-assessment and um, get some recognition I suppose for all the hard work that, that uh, the staff who are working with learners are actually doing. To, to, to work at that level, you really do need to work hard. Now, the reason it was going so well is not because we prepared um, for an inspection, but because we've been preparing a culture for a number of years that enabled staff to feel that if they've, whatever they've got an, you know, an observer in, it's just another part of the learner's journey. And actually, the they shouldn't be worried about the inspector watching 
what they should be focusing on is the next part of the learner's journey. And that message came through very strongly, and it was actually quite exciting to sit uh, in feedback and start hearing that coming through. Uh, and and Estin recognised that and gave us an excellent for um, teaching, training and assessment. In terms of the initial bounce um, in success rates, um, we found that every course apart from one improved in terms of their overall success rates within that first year. Part of our learning about teaching and learning and the process of that was about teaching our teams how to develop their actions for improvement and create a culture where they didn't feel that there was a blame attached, but they could be self-critical and self-reflective, and they could then innovate to make a difference. Uh, in Yale, we used to call it the quest for excellence. It was a, it was a whole, whole thing, the quest for excellence, and I, I think that fits.